Today on Under the Big Tree, creating an electronics pantry for synth DIY. Okay, let's see. Half a cup of 100 ohm resistors, a quarter cup of 3.3 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, and a handful of diodes. Sprinkle with a little bit of solder and mix well. Hmm, okay. Oh, hi there. When I started doing Eurorack DIY, I was purchasing kits. The kits would come with everything you need. The panel, the PCB, and all of the resistors, capacitors, ICs, and other electronic components that you needed to put the whole thing together. Uh, it made it really easy for me because everything was in one place and it was very simple for me to put together what I needed and build the module. But after a while, I came to three realizations. One, I realized that I really enjoyed during Eurorack DIY and that I was going to be doing it for a while. Two, that I had a ton of electronic components left over from the kits that I had built, as well as many electronic projects in the past. And three, purchasing PCBs and panels and using your own materials is a whole lot cheaper than buying the kits. Therefore, I decided to build a pantry of electronic components. All of the basic materials that you need for kit after kit, having them all in one place, well organized, and already purchased, makes it a whole lot more interesting and enticing for me to buy a PCB and panel kit. The pantry could consist of all of the electronic components that I already had, plus I could scour eBay and Amazon to find bulk electronics that I could use to fill in the gaps. Now, when you cook a fine recipe, you'll have a lot of the ingredients that you need in your pantry, but you're sure not going to have all of them. So you're still going to have to the, go to the grocery store for the specialized stuff that you need. Same thing with SDIY. The goal here is not to be able to have absolutely everything I could ever need, but to cover all of the basics so that I don't need to reorder those when I'm ordering the specialist pieces that I need for the particular kit that I'm building. My approach was to build a collection of all of the various resistor values and capacitor values that I might need. In addition, I added diodes, LEDs, common transistors, some of the basic ICs, as well as IC sockets. I added all of the knobs, buttons, and various and sundry things that I could get very inexpensively on the internet and put the whole thing together. When I started, everything was strewn about in a variety of different boxes. Trying to find anything that I actually needed became a real pain. As a result, I decided that the time had come to buy a series of parts drawers that I could organize everything in. I ended up going over to Harbor Freight and bought six 40 drawer boxes for the grand whopping total of $15 each. Organizing everything was really tedious, but once I was done, I was really glad that I had done so, and now I have everything that I need right at my fingertips. Let's go take a look. Okay, and here we are looking at the behemoth electronics pantry that I put together. As you can see, it was built from six of these part drawers that I bought from Harbor Freight. Each one was $15. Each one has 40 of these small drawers and then a larger drawer that slides out that holds other materials. The drawers are, you know, relatively cheap plastic, but they certainly get the job done and uh, I don't really have any problems with them, particularly not for the price. So six of these units stacked together like this are a little bit under three feet by three feet. And that gives me a grand total of, uh, oh, let's see, um, carry the one, uh, multiply it by 47.8, uh, and then take the square root. 246 drawers altogether. 240 of these small drawers and six of these bigger drawers. So the separate boxes are organized by component type, and then within that, the values of the components from smallest all the way to largest. Over half of the space is taken up by resistors. I have all of these resistors because many years ago when I was building a lot of DIY audio gear, there was a group buy on groupdiy.com to be able to buy these enormous bags of every value of resistor. So I purchased enough resistors then to last me a lifetime. The resistors start off with very small increments in value. We have 
10 ohms, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, 20, 22, then it starts to widen out a bit. So we get to 100, 110, 120, 130, and then moving down into the thousands, we have 1K, 1.1K, 1.2K, Moving on down into the tens of thousands, we have 10K, 11, 12, 13, 15. Finally, up here, we move into the hundred thousands, where we have 100K, 110K, 120K, and so forth, reaching down to one mega ohm. After that, I don't have very many. There's just another five values of mega ohms. 1.2 mega ohms, 2.2 mega ohms, 2.7 mega ohms, 4.75 mega ohms, and 10 mega ohms. If you need more resistance than 10 mega ohms, maybe it's time to talk to somebody about that. After the fixed resistors come variable resistors. So I have a series of pots, A10K, B1K, 10K linear pots, 25K pots, a couple of trim pots. Uh, I know that I'm gonna be purchasing more pots and filling out this area with, with more pots as time goes by because they're very useful. Below that is a little bit of random stuff. I have a couple of very high value capacitors. Here are some 2200 microfarad capacitors used for power supplies. Then I have a couple of inductors. And then here's a whole series of diodes which will come in really handy. 1N914, 1N4007, 1N4148. I purchased all of those from eBay in a bulk diode order. Moving along over here, we have our capacitor box. It starts with 27 picofarads and goes all the way up to 680 microfarads. Originally, I was gonna organize different types of capacitors separately, but I quickly realized that that didn't make a lot of sense because t space really is very much at a premium here. So some of these drawers have both ceramic and electrolytic capacitors in them. I also started by printing the maximum voltage capacity on the drawers, but eventually realized that that wasn't really important either. What was important was to be able to have large fonts to allow me to be able to quickly find the capacitor that I was looking for and bring it in. Some of these drawers, like 100 microfarads, are absolutely loaded to the brim because I have a ton of that value of capacitor. Whereas I only have about 20 of the 33 microfarad capacitors. It's time to look at our LEDs, our hardware, and our integrated circuits. So across here, I have white, red, blue, green, and yellow LEDs, again, that I made a bulk purchase of. Below that are some buttons, some caps for the buttons, and some various switches that I know I'm gonna use a lot with Eurorack. Dual pole double throw, single pole double throw, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have sockets for every primary type of IC, power headers, as used on just about every Eurorack module, and the 40 pin headers that seem to be used all the time as well. Then there's 3.5 millimeter audio jacks, of course, washers, and then below that, we have a whole series of different ICs that I've collected. Everything from really basic things like the 555 timer IC to a collection of SSM 2040 filter integrated circuits that I've had for many, many years and eventually I'm going to use to build some uh, interesting filters with. Next we come to various transistors and there are a few other things that are scattered about. Finally, we have these six big drawers. This first one has got various and sundry hardware. It was just sort of the junk box that I threw everything into. The second drawer has tons of Molex in it mostly from my old DIY audio production days, but some of this stuff will be useful for Eurorack as well. Over here, we have prototyping with a couple of prototype boards, a couple of power supplies, and a whole bunch of junction wires. On the bottom, we have a ton of knobs. I love going to surplus electronics stores and be able to find different interesting old-fashioned knobs, and I have quite a few of them. Some of these are gonna look great in Eurorack, although most of them are realistically more about the size of 5U. And the last drawer has perf board in a variety of different sizes, along with solid wire. This will be perfect for making one-off modules. As I said, I purchased most of these as various bulk orders from eBay, from a place called Tata Electronics that has a lot of materials for electronics DIY hobbyists, a few things on Amazon, and so forth. I'm sure that with every build, I'll still have to do an order of knobs and switches and integrated circuits and other things like that. But I think with this pantry, I've got an awfully good head start. 
So that's it for this episode of Under the Big Tree. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. And, as always, if you like what we're doing here, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For now, this is Nick, signing off.